And next up we have uh, Jacob Bourbon with uh, Matayo, who's going to tell us about the Matayo creator. So uh, take it away. Cool. Thank you. Hi. Uh, how many people here want to work with augmented reality? Can I see a, a raise of hands? Perfect. That's great. How many people here can create augmented reality? How many developers do we have? It's a big difference. Um, so what I'm here to today to talk about is the Matayo Creator, which is a really cool application. There we go. Uh, which basically allows you, without any programming experience, to publish to almost any sort of uh, application. Uh, it's a drag and drop interface, and you'll see that we can create an entire augmented reality experience in two or three minutes flat. And then from there, you can publish to iOS, Android, uh, PC, Mac, uh, you can basically take it anywhere, and it's a, a very flexible tool. So uh, I do have a couple of slides here talking about what it can do and how great it is and uh, all the different things that you can uh, deploy it to. But I thought it would be a lot more interesting if I actually showed you guys just how quick and easy it is to get an augmented reality scene um, up and going. It also has a really nice live preview function, so we're going to build something from scratch right now, and uh, we're going to see it live. So. Let's see. So we're just going to uh, launch it here. The display is a little bit uh, crimped, apparently. But that's OK. That's the uh, monitor. We have this uh, ad tracking marker right here. Uh, we support image tracking, uh, object tracking, and environment tracking. So if you build a, uh, a 3D map or a 3D point cloud, you can import it into here. And you'll be able to see the, the uh, point cloud and place your objects based on uh, snapshots that were taken if you uh, created it. For now, we're going to start with uh, image tracking, though. And we're just going to select two different markers. And we're going to assign two different models. Uh, we're going to assign a cup here. And we'll just scale that up. Yoinks. OK, we'll come back to the scaling in a minute. And we'll, over here, we're going to assign the um, Matayo man. And actually, could you pass me that piece of paper right there? Cool, thank you. Um, that actually is how easy it is to create an augmented reality experience right now. Um, you can publish this to uh, Junio. You can publish this to, uh, uh, you can create your own iOS application. You can create your own Android application. And right now, we could build this and put it on all of your phones. Uh, so if we hold this up. Maybe the uh, lighting is an issue here. <laughs> Nothing like a technical presentation gone wrong, huh? <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm going to just start this right here again. Uh, I see what's happening. It's, uh, I'm afraid the display is actually, our camera image is this big, and the tracking isn't working since everything's been all scrunched up. So I'm afraid the uh, live preview won't work right now. Um, however, you can see how quickly and easily we were able to, uh, to do that. We also have a uh, publishing mode, since this uh, application was designed initially for publishers or people who want to get into augmented reality, but they don't have the technical chops to do so, basically. Um, you can create uh, full issues um, and then bundle them all together and basically you just create, uh, have the exact same layout and publish one after the other and just alter the content and the uh, images, which is really easy. Uh, you're able to do interesting things like uh, use models uh, for occlusion, which uh, I think we saw in your uh, presentation too, which uh, really helps uh, at the depth, I think, of uh, especially when you're uh, augmenting 3D point clouds. If you're doing um, a real desktop environment and you know where different objects are going to be, you can create occlusion models and place them there so that your, your, your 3D content actually appears to pass behind content uh, in the real world, which is very powerful. And that's uh, just a simple toggle there. Uh, in addition, we have a, a full UI editor where you're able to drag and drop buttons uh, linked to different applications. 
um, if you publish it on our Junio platform, you're able to switch between different channels. Uh, and again, it's it's literally just um, drag and drop. Like you select a button, like change channel, and then you link it to. Uh, oops. Uh, scale this down. You just put it in the uh, upper left hand corner, for example, and then you link it to a different account. You can launch uh, other applications, open websites, uh, anything that you want. Um, so, <laughs> um, that's how easy it is, I mean, to create uh, augmented reality from scratch. Uh, and I always feel bad because it's, this is a very short demonstration, I mean, to get to the end result. But that's really all it takes. I mean, it takes two, three minutes flat with absolutely no experience. And so anybody can just sit down, open this up. We have a uh, demo, which allows you to track two different markers and add uh, multiple amounts of content to it. And uh, you can publish it for free, which is really cool. And I think that what this does is it lowers the barrier for entry into augmented reality, which is a problem right now is there's so many people out there with really good ideas for what they want to do with augmented reality. But they're so, but up until now, it's been very difficult to actually pull that off. It's um, challenging for people to actually, uh, especially artists, I find. Uh, we've worked with a couple of artists recently. And um, the biggest thing is they have these grand visual ideas. And some of them even have access to the 3D content. But, but, but the in-between step, actually, taking, taking the model and putting it on the page has been, up until now, a real hindrance, which, is, which has pushed a lot of people away. And so by... Um, by bringing that gap a lot closer together, we're able to see a lot more interesting content. We're able to see, um, we're, we're able to bring people who wouldn't be able to work with augmented reality and uh, publish it, basically. Um, so if you were, hypothetically, you wanted to publish to uh, iOS, you just come up here and click uh, Create My App. You uh, can create a standalone application, you can create a desktop application, or you can uh, host it on the cloud and uh, publish it through our uh, our um, Junio platform, and uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, are there any uh, questions about it? Uh, we'll start over here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, let's just say we were to. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, he was just curious about what goes into uh, actually publishing your own application. Um, so for example, right here, we'll just make a, um, a desktop application because we'll actually be able to see the results. So if we just go up here to the uh, publish button and we say desktop application, we have this model and this marker right now. We click on uh, next and we save it to the desktop like so. And there you go, it's published. <laughs> we now have an, uh, uh, an application which will run on any Mac platform. Um, and if we navigate to our desktop, you should be able to see that we have this uh, little RL player right now. Um, and, and it runs on both Windows and PC. So this is something that you can share instantly. And we just created a kiosk style augmented reality application. Yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, back there. Yeah, sure. So the question was basically, how do you find content um, online uh, that'll work well in an augmented reality uh, environment, I think? Um, the biggest thing, obviously, is uh, model size. I mean, that's a huge factor right there. Um, what you're talking about, so I assume that you, you mean that you're importing uh, models and maybe they have a gray texture, right? Yeah. Or, the, or they aren't importing correctly or something like that. 
a lot of times that's a, a simple mistake in the uh, .mtl file. And if you open it up, you'll find that the path to the uh, image isn't always correct. And so a lot of times that when you find models like this online that aren't optimized, um, it's just if you check the, uh, the different file paths and you make sure that everything's in the same folder, you'll find that a, a couple of little tweaks will get them all working correctly. So um, any other questions? Oh, yeah, there in the back. Yeah, um, it would um, be possible. I haven't done it before, but um, you can export an RL package, uh, which is um, basically works with uh, HTML5, JavaScript, and PHP, and it's it's written in those languages. And then you'd be able to uh, open that up in. It depends on how your your existing application is structured, but yes, it is possible. Uh, thanks. Uh, looks like we're down to our last minute. Do we have one final question? Uh, cool, right here. Uh, if you wish to um, expand beyond uh, two markers, then yes. I, I believe it's uh, $500 or so, um, basically aimed at uh, agencies or uh, students. And we do have uh, all sorts of discounts available for universities and uh, et cetera. Is that a one-time fee? Uh, yeah, exactly. Once you uh, purchase it, you can publish uh, as many times as you want. So, cool. And uh, with that, it looks like my time is up, so I'll pass it to our uh, final.